Hey team, Mr. C here, and this video is about mechanical devices. Now, mechanical devices or mechanisms is quite a big topic, so I've split it up. So this is the first of three videos about this. Now today, we're gonna to look at the basics of the four different types of motion, but we're also going to look at levers as well. Well, what are mechanical devices, I hear you ask? What are mechanical devices? A mechanical device is basically anything that moves. For example, the bolt that holds this gate shut. A bicycle wheel that rotates. A gate catch. A door handle. Another door handle. Another door handle. The temperature dial inside a car. A thingy. Handle, that's it. A tap is also a mechanical device and it has moving parts inside as well. Oh no! A garden sprinkler. A tin opener has lots of moving parts, including gears that mesh together like that. Right, so a mechanical device is anything that moves or anything that's got moving parts in it. The examples that we've looked at so far have been quite simple. I'm going to show you two more now where they are slightly more complicated. The first one is the inside of a clock. It's made up of lots of small parts that very accurately fit together so it shows the right time. I want you also to closely study how the pendulum swings backwards and forwards in an arc, not in a straight line, because this is something that we're going to come back to later on. The inside of a sewing machine is made up of lots of parts that move together to make the sewing machine work properly. Watch the needle as it moves up and down in a straight line, not in an arc. This is something else that we're going to come back to later on. There are four types of motion, and on the GCSE exam, they might ask you about these. Now, luckily, the examples that we've looked at fit into one of those four categories. So, here they are. Linear. Rotary. Reciprocating. Not reciprocating. Say it after me. Reciprocating. Oscillating. It looks like it should be pronounced oscillating. Repeat after me. Oscillating. When the next screen comes up, what I'd like you to do is pause it and I want you to match up the types of motion with their definition. Then unpause it and I'll go through the answers. Pause. The answers are coming up. Doesn't matter if you got them wrong, but you will have to learn them for your GCSE exam at the end of year 11. Firstly, linear motion is moving one way in a straight line. Next we've got rotary motion, which means moving in a circle. Lots of examples of this, including the bike wheel, the gears on the tin opener, and the temperature dial on the car. Next we've got reciprocating, which means moving backwards and forwards, or up and down, in a straight line, just like the needle on this sewing machine. Finally we've got oscillating, which means moving backwards and forwards in an arc, just like the pendulum on this clock. Before we go on to learn about levers, I'm going to give you some questions to try on what we've learned so far. When the questions come up, pause the video, have a go at them yourselves, then unpause it and I'll go through the answers. Pause. Okay, answers coming up. A common mistake that a lot of people make is to get reciprocating and oscillating mixed up. And that's because they both move backwards and forwards, but you've got to remember that reciprocating does it in a straight line, whereas oscillating moves backwards and forwards in an arc. Also, people do tend to get linear and reciprocating mixed up as well. You've got to remember that reciprocating means moves backwards and forwards, whereas linear is in one direction. That's your favourite. And these are just examples of correct answers to question two. The examiner, who's marking your paper at the end of year 11, will accept anything that is correct. However, my advice is stick to obvious ones like the examples that I've given here. One last thing about the four types of motion is that you might be expected to draw or recognise the symbols for them. So here they are. Now that you've mastered the four types of movement or motion, we're now going to move on and we're going to learn about levers. <laughs> levers are a mechanical device that are there to make jobs easier. And as you can see from the lever facts, there are three main types, which we'll look at now. A first order or a class one lever has a pivot somewhere between the load and the effort. 
Once upon a time there was a man and he wanted to move a heavy rock but he wasn't strong enough. So his mate gave him a big stick and he said use the big stick to try and move your rock but it was still too hard because the rock was really heavy. So his mate said why don't you try putting a pivot underneath the stick that might make it easier. So he put a pivot or a fulcrum underneath and because his effort was further away from the pivot than the load, it meant that he had lots of leverage, therefore could move the rock quite easily. Little did the man know that he'd actually created a first order lever, also known as a class one lever. This is where the pivot is somewhere between the load and the effort. Later that day, the man had trouble getting the lid off a tin of paint, so he made a first order lever using a screwdriver. The lid of the tin was the load, the effort was the man pushing down on the screwdriver and the pivot was where the screwdriver was resting on the edge of the tin. A second order or a class 2 lever, this is where the load somewhere between the pivot and the effort. <laughs> So just like the first order lever, the effort is further away from the pivot than the load. Therefore the man gets more leverage and it means it's easier for him to pick up the heavy load. The wheelbarrow is a really good example of a second order or a class 2 lever. The wheel acts as a pivot, that's at one end, and the effort, which is where the man lifts it with the handle, is at the other end. The load is somewhere in between the effort and the pivot. Because the handle, and therefore the effort, is further away from the pivot than the load, this is what gives it extra leverage, making it easy to carry heavy things. Third order, or class 3 lever, this is where the effort is somewhere in the middle between the pivot and the load. Once upon a time there was a man, and he put a big load on the end of a stick. The stick was pivoted at the other end and he decided that he'd lift it somewhere in the middle but he found it really, really hard. In fact, instead of being easier, the weight felt heavier than when he actually put it on the end of the stick in the first place. This was because he turned it into a third order lever where the load was further away from the pivot than his effort was. In other words, the load had more leverage than the effort. This is something that weight trainers use. Another excellent example of a third order lever is the type of fishing rod that I'm drawing now. At one end you've got the load which is the weight of the fish pulling down. The pivot is the bottom of the two hands holding the fishing rod still and the effort is the upper of the two hands which is basically pulling the fishing rod back. So even though this type of lever gives the load more leverage and therefore makes it harder to lift the fish out of the water, what it does do is it allows you to move the end of the fishing rod much, much faster. Some mechanical devices are made up of two levers connected together at the pivot, just like the following examples. On these scissors, the effort is my fingers and thumb pushing the handles together. The load is the force that the blades have to overcome when they're cutting through the paper. And with the pivot being in the middle, the scissors are an example of two first order levers connected together. If you look at the right hand end of the tweezers, you will see that there's two levers there pivoted together. My finger and thumb are pushing together to close the tweezers, therefore that's the effort. And with the effort being in the middle, that's the giveaway that we're talking about third order levers. The load would be caused at the left hand side, for example, by plucking out an eyebrow hair. And what kind of lever is this? Yes, these tongs are two first order levers pivoted together in the middle. These are different design of tongs. What kind of lever are these? 
that's it. It's two third order levers pivoted together at the end with the effort in the middle and the load is where they're picking up the egg. One last thing about mechanisms is that you have to be able to do mechanical advantage and velocity ratio calculations. I'm going to cover that in another video because I'm doing two more about mechanisms. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Bye for now. Need you more than oxygen. See